Hello kindergartners, first and second graders. This is Mrs. Ternitza with your next library lesson. Um, this week we're going to talk about identifying literary genres. And we are going to talk in a few minutes about what a genre is. And I know last time um, we talked about story elements and we did a lot of different things around story elements. But now I would like to switch over and have you learn about genres. Okay. So, literary genres. Your learning intention is that I can identify genres, and success is that I can identify the genre of a book by deciding whether it is fiction or nonfiction. So, we're going to learn today the difference between fiction and nonfiction. Okay, let's talk about it. Why is reading important? Let's go ahead and review that before we talk about fiction and nonfiction. Well, if you remember from our other lessons, we talked about reading being important because it exercises your brain. Just like when you do PE, it exercises your muscles. Um, you can learn new things when you read. It can help grow your imagination. You can learn new words, words which is really important, like sight words. And also, it can help you learn to speak better. So learning to read is really important. So it's learning those ABCs and then using those letters to make words and then using those words to make sentences and learning how to read them. Okay, so what is a literary genre? So literary genres are the different types of stories or information that we find in books. Some examples of genres we read are fiction and nonfiction. Now, fiction, think of fiction, it starts with the letter F, so think of F and fake. So it's a story with characters and events, like we talked about when we talked about story elements, that have been made up in the author's mind. It's fake, it's something that's completely made up. Then we have nonfiction which are books that give us information about real things. So Ms. T wants to make sure that when you're reading a book or somebody's reading a book to you, that you know what kind of book they're reading to you, that you know the difference between fiction, which is a made-up story, or nonfiction, which is a book about real things. It could be a book about dancing, cars, cooking, sports, all, all the things that are real. Okay. Let's take a quick listen to this fiction versus nonfiction, and it'll help you learn more about the difference between the two. Hey, this is Sparkly Barkly here to teach you the difference between fiction and nonfiction. What is fiction? Well, when we talk about fiction, we are talking about a make-believe story. A story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. In order for us to understand the story, we have to read it in order, from the beginning to the end. A fiction book also has characters. It could be anything from princesses to knights or dragons or even kids just like you. A fiction book has a setting. It could be a farm. It could be the beach. It could even be the moon. We read fiction books for entertainment or for enjoyment. They're just fun to read. Then what is nonfiction? Well, Nonfiction books are fact books. They are full of information. They could be about farm animals, motorcycles, trucks, cars, or other types of transportation, pets and other animals. They could be about sports and other recreational activities, or even places. Nonfiction books don't have to be read in any particular order. You can go look in the table of contents to find something, or in the index. These parts of nonfiction books tell you where to find the information you're looking for in that book. Nonfiction books have other cool tools to help you understand the information, 
like bold words, captions, or diagrams with labels. You can even have photos and charts. They even have a small dictionary at the back of the book. We call this a glossary. We read nonfiction books to learn. Maybe it's for a school report or a project, or maybe it's just for fun. So let's review. Fiction is a story. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. It has characters and settings. It has to be read in order, and it's read for entertainment. Nonfiction is factual, can be read in any order, can have bold words, captions, labels, diagrams, glossaries, photos, and charts. It can also have a table of contents or an index. And we read nonfiction books to learn about a topic. Thanks for listening. And in the famous words of Dr. Seuss, you can find magic wherever you look. Just sit back and relax. All you need is a book. Created using Powtoon. Okay, guys, good job. So hopefully this helps you understand a little bit better the difference between fiction and nonfiction. So remember, fiction are most of the stories that we've listened to so far this year in our lessons. They're make-believe stories. They have story elements, which we've learned about. Remember, characters, setting, the events, beginning, middle, end. Um, I didn't mention it on this video, but there's like a problem and a solution. And then there's the nonfiction, which are books about real things. Anything real that you want to learn about, that you want to learn facts about, you would find in a non-fiction book. All right, guys. Okay, so Ms. T is going to let you listen to two books. One is fiction and one is non-fiction. And then Ms. T will go over after we listen to them which one is fiction, when, which one is non-fiction, and why they are that way. Okay. First, let's listen to Diary of a Spider. Diary of a Spider by Doreen Cronin. Pictures by Harry Bliss. March 1st. Today was Grandparents' Day at school, so I brought Grandpa with me. He taught us three things. Number one, spiders are not insects. Insects have six legs. Number two, Without spiders, insects could take over the world. Number three, butterflies taste better with a little barbecue sauce. March 16th. Grandpa says that in his day, flies and spiders did not get along. Things are different now. This is awesome! March 29th. Today in gym class, we learned how to catch the wind so we could travel to faraway places. Next. When I got home, I made up flashcards so I could practice. One, climb high. Two, release silk. Three, catch wind. Fly made up her own flashcard. I'm, sta I'm starting to see why Grandpa doesn't like her. April 1st. I went to the park with my sister today. We tried the seesaw. It didn't work. We tried the tire swing. It didn't work. And we spun a huge sticky web on the water fountain. That worked. Eek! April 12th. Today was safety day at school. We learned that vacuums eat spider webs and are very, very dangerous. If we hear a vacuum, we should stop, drop, and run. Stop what we're doing, drop from the web, run like crazy. April 13th. We had a vacuum drill today. I stopped what I was doing, forgot where I was going, 
and ran screaming from the room. Help! We're having another drill tomorrow. April 17th. I'm sleeping over at Worm's house tonight. I hope they don't have leaves and rotten tomatoes for dinner again. May 7th. Mom said I was getting too big for my own skin, so I molted. That is so gross. May 8th. Today was show and tell, so I brought in my old skin. My teacher called on it to lead the Pledge of Allegiance. You there, why don't you get us started? June 5th. Daddy Longlegs made fun of Fly because she eats with her feet. Now she won't come out of her treehouse. I'm going to find him and give him a piece of my mind. June 6th. I found Daddy Longlegs. He's a lot bigger than I thought he was. I gave him a piece of my lunch instead. June 7th. Fly's treehouse blew away in the wind today. So did Grandpa. June 18th. I got a postcard from Grandpa today. Dear Spider, Ooh la la, I landed in Paris. French bugs are delicious. Au revoir, Grandpa. Leg of a French gnat. Give it a try. June 30th. Grandpa came home today. I couldn't wait to hear about how he rode the wind all the way over the ocean. Turns out he caught a breeze to the airport and napped in first class. July 2nd. Fly came over to play today. She got stuck in our web, and her mom had to come get her. Grandpa laughed a little too hard. From now on, we have to play at Fly's house. Hi, Mom! July 9th. Today was my birthday. Grandpa decided I was old enough to know the secret to a long, happy life. Never fall asleep in a shoe. July 16th. Things I scare. Number one, Fly's mom. It wasn't his fault, mom. Number two, tiny bugs. And number three, people using water fountains at the park. July 17th. Things that scare me. Number one, daddy long legs. Number two, vacuums. And number three, people with big feet. No! August 1st. I wish that people wouldn't judge all spiders based on the few spiders that bite. I know if we took the time to get to know each other, we would get along just fine. Just like me and Fly. The end. Okay, guys, good job. So we listened to Diary of a Spider. Okay, now we're going to listen to interesting facts about spiders. Did you know that the spiders are one of the animals that most people are scared of? There are millions of people who have arachnophobia, meaning that when they see a spider, they run away screaming. The majority of these arachnids of eight legs have six or eight eyes, and yet they have poor sight. Did you know 
that the silk that comes out of the spider's abdomen is much more resistant than steel wire of the same thickness. Well, it is, and it's a lot more elastic. Some say that if you were to use a spider's web with a thickness of a pencil, it could stop a plane in flight. That's incredible. Humans can use the spider's web for many different things, such as bulletproof jackets, threads of suture for stitching wounds, clothes, violin strings, or ropes used to hold a lot of weight, such as the one used by this mountaineer. Did you know that spiders use their webs to hunt as well as to travel? The spider's web is very sticky, and when an insect lands on it, it gets stuck and can't escape. And the spider then makes the most of it to eat it up. They also use their web to make cocoons for their eggs. And some to glide from one place to another with the help of the wind, just like Spider-Man. The truth is, spiders and the webs they make with their silk are one of the most fascinating facts we can learn from our nature. Don't you think? Okay, guys, good job. So let's take a look. We have Diary of a Spider, and then we have interesting facts about spiders. So hopefully you guys have been thinking about this while you listen to both of them, about which one is fiction and which one is nonfiction. Well, if you decided that Diary of a Spider was fiction, then you are correct. Because remember we said fiction meant fake, make-believe, it had different story elements in it. And when we listened to Diary of a Spider, all those different things that happened in that story, like the spider having his diary and the different adventures that happened to him and the fact that they had the spider talking in the story. So we know all those things that happened to the spider and his friends, those were all make-believe. Those can't happen to spiders in real life, right? Spiders can't really talk. Spiders can't really have diaries. Then if you thought that interesting facts about spiders was nonfiction, then you are also correct. And one of the clues in the title of interesting facts about spiders is the word facts. So facts are things that are true about something. And if you think about it, everything that we listened to in that video had real spiders in it and was telling us things about real spiders and what they do and what they eat. And so that is nonfiction. That was about real spiders and things about real spiders. Okay, guys, good job. Okay, what we're going to do now is we are going to practice knowing the difference between fiction and nonfiction. So Miss T is going to show you some covers of some books, and we're going to decide, is it fiction? And remember, fiction starts with F or means fake, make-believe. Or is it nonfiction, meaning it's about it's not fake, right? Non means not, and then fiction has F for fake, so not fake. And remember, not fake are things that are real. Books about things that are real it can be about people, animals. Okay, so let's take a look. So we have this is a make believe story. Oh, there's our clue. It has talking animals. So if you look at the cover, and I know a lot of you like those stories with pigeon, and Mo Willems talks, um, writes about pigeon. The pigeon needs a bath. And on the cover, it has the pigeon saying, I do not. Well, we know that's make-believe, right? These are stories. Pigeons can't really talk. 
So we'll say that this is fiction. Good job, guys. This is a make-believe story. It's not about real pigeons. Okay, good job. All right, this book has facts about our first president. Oh, there's my clue. Facts. It is a biography. And we may have talked about this before. Biography is one of the genres of, say it with me, nonfiction. Right. George Washington was a real person. And a biography is a book written about him. So since it is facts about someone, that means it's what? It's not fiction, but it's nonfiction. Good job because it's about someone who is real. It gives us facts about a real person. Okay, good job, guys. Here's another one. This is a make-believe story, and on the front it says Rumpelstiltskin. This is a type of fairy tale, like Cinderella, or Snow White, or Sleeping Beauty. So we know that these are made-up stories. They are not about real people or real things. So if it's made up and it's not real, it's what? Say it with me. Fiction. Good job, guys. Okay, let's go to the next one. Ooh, pretty Clydesdale horses. So this book has facts about real horses. Well, there's two clues, facts and real. So this has information in it that we can learn about real horses called Clydesdales. And also that clue word in there, information. So if it's a book that has information in it that you can learn about real things, then we know that means it is what? Say it with me, nonfiction. Good job, guys, because it is a book about real things, about real horses. Okay, good job. All right, excellent. I hope you guys enjoyed the practice. What Miss T is going to do, I'm going to put this worksheet on the Google Classroom with the lesson. And if you just want to look at it on the screen and then just take a piece of paper and for each one of those, I want you to decide if it's F fiction or if it's NF nonfiction. And like the first one, the elephant is in the zoo. Well, we know that is real. Elephants are in the zoo. So on your paper, you could write, like maybe put a number one for the elephant and then you could say nonfiction, NF. In here, Miss T can show you how you could do that. So what you could do on a piece of paper is just number it. And if you want this one to be number one, then you could just put in F for nonfiction. Okay. And then you can read the rest of these and on your paper, you can put what you think they are for practice. And if you want to share it with me, great. Um, and, or if you are able to print this out, you could always print it out on your, um, on your home printer and you could fill it out and then you could share it with me and you could even color it if you, if you'd like to. Um, so this is just really good practice too, for you guys to know the difference between fiction and nonfiction. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Um, I really do want you to learn about the difference between fiction and nonfiction, um, it's really important because I want you to understand when you're reading a book what kind of book you are reading. And until next time, if you guys need anything, just email Miss T, let me know, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Follow directions, listen to your teacher, listen to your parents, do your schoolwork, and I will be talking to you soon. Bye, guys.